This is where it gets really fascinating. So what I found is that Borrelia and all the others that we're talking about have the ability to enter the body generally without a whole lot of fanfare. But it can enter our cells, our cardiac cells, our heart cells, our brain cells, and it can go dormant. And it can stay that way. You know, when we look at this concept of microdormancy, I found that it's a lot more widespread than we appreciated. I've documented it for Bartonella, which is a completely different kind of bacteria. Mm -hmm. I've documented it for, it's been documented for Babesia, um, but also mycoplasmas, chlamydias, and then all the viruses like Epstein-Barr and many, many others. But things that would surprise you, like Streptococcus, and we hear about pandas. I actually found a study that one of the varieties of Streptococcus that invades our tonsils and, and makes kids sick, it can actually go dormant inside cells and it can invade white blood cells, which allows it to be carried into the brain and other areas. And all this has been documented for Streptococcus, which starts to explain, well, why kids with pandas are resistant to antibiotics. Well, it just goes dormant inside yeah. cells. Yeah.